Okay, I think we're recording here. All right, Lucian, how you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing, Nate? Wonderful. So, um, Lucian is the, I, I, I call you Professor Lucian, to everyone else. <laughs> You're the sage. Oh. You're the sage. <laughs> so, the backstory of how I know Lucian is, um, I don't know. I mean, it's probably been five plus years. Five plus years. At yeah. least. Um, yeah. But I, I just remember taking guitar lessons at uh, RMI in Bellevue and, uh, you know, and at a certain point they were like, yeah, you got to go take lessons with Lucian, um, you know, because I was interested in some of the more um, noodly guitar players, you know, Eric Johnson and, and stuff like that. And they're like, oh yeah, Lucian's your guy. So I went over and, and I remember um, specifically the, uh, I remember it was the first time I'd ever seen someone where you could like, I could be, you know, I could talk about Eric Johnson or Joe Satriani and, and you're just like, Oh yeah. Like, and you could do it. And it sounded like them. And I was like, Oh my God, it's, it's like one dude that is just putting that amount of time. And it, you know, it's, it still blows me away. So, um, but, but the thing is, I've always kind of known you as like an instructor, but then I also know that you have all this music you've released as a solo artist and as a songwriter. And, you know, so I feel like, uh, I don't know. I've just become curious about that because I, I know that you have a deep well of musicianship and then uh, you're also kind of a reserved guy in person, in my opinion. And so it, it's almost like listening to your songs feels like I, I get to know, you know, a lot more of your internal world than I, than I think is, you know, you're, you're not a super hard on your sleeve kind of guy. It, but I mean that in a, you know, hopefully in a complimentary way, right? It's it's just, mm -hmm. it's just that like those songs, it feels like it just goes right into the 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 core of Lucian. It, it feels very personal, you know, when I'm listening to those. So, um, so I guess I wanted to, uh, you know, ask you a couple questions about your your uh, Trust Fall record. So that's your most recent record, yeah. right? Yes, the most recent record. Yeah, that yeah. Um, just released that. I think that that's that's from last year. But yeah, that's the most really recent recording I've done. I mean, there's other projects that are going on, but cool. Uh, yeah, that's the recent collection. Mm -hmm. And so, um, these songs, like, is there, uh, is there a particular? Um, well, I guess first of all, the name of of the record, Trustfall, and and uh, you know, can you say like why that was what you chose? Um, well, I guess it was about like a lot of the songs have to do with letting go and just, you know, um, just tr basically just trusting things that things are going to be okay. Um, you know, that we, we go through things and sometimes we're skeptical about it, but you know, usually it ends up being, we get, we, you know, we might not get through it unscathed, but we can get through it. And so let it go seemed, and, yeah. Well, it seems like some, there was definitely some uh, loss maybe that you were dealing with in some of these songs, or maybe it seems like you're reflecting back on your past or on like cherished memories. Yes, definitely. I think a lot of the lyrics had to do with that because I was uh, definitely in, um, you know, looking at childhood and what the, the changes that we, we see, you know, later on, you know, you're going, at first you're going through childhood and it's this whole experience and then looking back on it and what did I learn from all that? And where did, you know, I'm, I'm uh -huh. at this point now and it's just it, not looking at back at it like nostalgically, but as it like, oh, wasn't that the best time ever? Like kind of thing, but just looking at it as gosh, you know, I, I had, you know, uh, I had some help along the way and it was, uh -huh. it was great to appreciate some of the things that happened in the past that taught me you know, uh, things that where I am at now seem to be like, oh, that was that piece of information or somebody that helped mm. me. Like, you know, I, I, like one, I talk about my mom, um, you know, in that. I, there's a, there is even was on that another the first record. song? The, uh, the, uh, yeah. Through Doorways? Through, yeah, yeah, Through Doorways. So like, you know, kind of like mom was the hinge of that, you know, doorway to get that door open and, you know, saying, you know, go out and explore you know and you know kind of you know it's, it's great to have and not everybody has it but it, i mean it's great to have you know a parent or somebody you know who's on your side to do you think um a part of your reflectiveness is i mean i think about this quite a bit it, there's no uh 
kind of as that Pink Floyd song implies, there's no, um, uh, that, you know, you miss the starting gun. Um, yeah. That essentially there's no, uh, there's no moment, I, I feel like, in your life where it's like, okay, you're an adult. But at some time you are. And then yeah. at some point you look back and you're like, well, I guess I'm an adult. I guess I'm an adult. I still feel like a, like a 12-year-old kid half the time, you know, like, I mean, in terms of like, just just life and, you know, you learn things, but you're ex at some point you're just, you're going through things and people are teaching you, teaching you things or you pick up stuff and you're asking questions, you know, and you don't know everything. And the whole point, I guess, in life, you're not going to know everything, but you, you, you gather what you can. But at some point you're just dumped out into that thing of, okay, you're an adult, go. And it's like, what do I know? I don't know anything. Thing. Right, and, it, and I always feel like I don't know anything anyway. So it's just it's this constant exploration of of you know trying to trying to see what I do know, and then like you know try and balance a situation or just survive in some situation. Yeah. So, well, do yeah. you think do you think sometimes that um I guess I guess you're uh, that you this this sort of like chaos that's in that's in life um i don't know it, it almost seems like it only makes sense when you look back on it like it never feels settled when you're in it mm -hmm. um yeah. i mean does to me it seems like that is almost one of the greatest values of songwriting is that it's an it's one of those ways to like create little bookmarks of meaning and to yeah. contextualize your your story ah yeah yeah you know yeah yeah and, and as a form of documentation to right, what right, your experience right. is, right? Because it's like, it's, I think songwriting, you know, I mean, is, it's like you're capturing your, your thoughts in this kind of word and sound um, way that this is my expression, my view, and it's my experience of the way I, I experience the world. And if, you know, somebody else goes oh yeah i kind of see it that way too or it kind of helps them that's great you know that's great too but a lot of times it is me trying to like here's here's what i'm dealing with and this is the way i view things and it's the way i choose to express myself you know i don't paint i you know um it, so this this is the one you know i've i've always been interested in writing music so uh and my background's in composition so uh, you know, songwriting, you know, I had all these friends who were songwriters and I was like, oh, let me, I gotta start writing. And I've always loved, you know, songwriters. So it was like, gosh, I, I want to do that too. Mm. Yeah. Um, well then I want to steer the, our conversation in that direction here in just a minute. But sure. um, I guess while we're to bookend this, this thought, like, do you find that you, um, do you find that like, you your evolution as a person okay i guess what i'm trying to say is i feel like songs i've written years ago there's an incredible there's almost an urgency that you have to have when you write a song with the amount of time that you then need to go record it because it it feels like it almost you start to change as a person or your life circumstances change and then that's not like you anymore but it was very you in 2013 or it was very you in 2020, like you in 2025 will probably look back on these trust fall songs and you'll be like, yeah, that was just who I was then, but you won't be that person anymore. And like, if you were to go try and record a bunch of those old songs, maybe you almost couldn't, or you couldn't get excited about them anymore, or they wouldn't have yeah. the same like resonance. Do, do you feel that way? Yeah. Yeah. I think once, you know, uh, once I'm kind of done writing the songs, it's kind of like, I've already almost moved on from what that experience was about kind of what I was saying at that moment. I mean, and I, I look back at some of the, the other early songs I've written and there's definitely more political things and I, mm. you know, and, and the way I'm expressing things is to, is totally different. My process is different and yeah, just, just my view of, of things has changed and it's what I want to talk about might be different. Um, and so, yeah, I, we're always kind of constantly evolving, constantly searching, constantly becoming. And, and so at any one moment, yeah, it's like all I'm doing is trying to, you know, kind of capture that, that view and that bottle it up for that moment. And then it's just like, okay, 
here's the way I'm expressing and I'm feeling at the moment. Um, and so th that's why like when I, I definitely, when I'm recording a lot of times, it's just, I have the basic song written. I'm just recording and putting the instruments on there and it's basically improvising to that, to that moment. Mm. And it comes out in that one version is the way it is for that. So I don't like to spend a lot of time like working out every single part. Um, it, it, I like it to be a little bit more just like I'm coming up with it to stay, uh, stay in that material and stay with that feel because a lot of times, you know, not only losing interest in, <laughs> in the material because it's just like, oh, I'm already done with that or you yeah. know, I want to move on, you know, uh, it's like, you know, I, just staying inspired and stuff like that, that it's, it's interesting to just see what it is for that moment that it could be, if I was writing that song later down the line, there might be a whole different approach to it. You know? mm. yeah. yeah. Well, that, that is actually very interesting. That was one of the things I was curious about is how, um, basically how improvisational are you? with songwriting and particularly with the, with the instruments. Um, because I mean, on Bandcamp, you got like seven albums. I mean, you've written a lot of music yeah. at this point. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. I think, and have a busy teaching schedule and be playing in a bunch of gigs and, mm -hmm. you know, have your personal life. Like, I don't think you could do that if you nitpick things too much. Yes. I, I don't think you could yeah. have that kind of output. No. Yeah. I, and I've gotten, faster in the process because I have I've definitely uh, acquired the tools and done done the work to be more efficient um, definitely playing wise because I'm more known as like a guitar player because I you know more as an accompanist for other people or playing pedal steel playing guitar playing jazz guitar doing gigs and, and being kind of like the sideman guy that's that's you know where most of my effort has been in in the past um, so I'm more of I've, I've already got the efficiency at laying down the, the parts and putting, you know, putting a bed of stuff under the song, creating the song itself. It's taken me a long time in terms of lyrics are still just a labor, you know, in terms of, and, and, but I've gotten better with process for that. And, you know, um, some of the things that have helped me are, um, you know, going through uh, the Berkeley songwriting program. So I'm finishing that up and, and definitely with the teaching there, that's been like dry, real drive to make me more efficient, to have a process um, lyrically, musically, uh, you know, whichever facet I start in. So like sometimes the, it, it might start from a lyric. Sometimes it does start from a drum groove. Sometimes it could start from a chord progression or a melody. Any angle now that I start from, I feel like I can, actually get something generated and and get something completed too versus having just sketches of stuff and then putting it in a bottom drawer and never you know and there's still right. those times when like i just i'm just practicing practicing oh this is a cool like chord progression but i kind of put it away and just kind of like that was just a little exercise kind of thing mm. so, um yeah well let's see so could you, what, what is the uh, pie as far as how often a song comes from lyrics first versus music first for you? What, what would be the breakdown there percentage wise? Mm -hmm. Is it 100% okay. music first? Ah, uh, oh, well, in the beginning, uh, first few albums I wrote, like all the songs, 100% music first. It was just, you know, create the chord progression. Oh, I got this cool melody. Let me put the chords to it, 100%. Now it's actually the um, uh, trust fall was 100% lyric first. And some of the songs came out of like some of the classes I was taking and uh, others didn't. But it was either, I love the exercise of writing from the title writing from the title gets me generating what could be a chorus mm -hmm. so lyrically i can flesh that out it gets me into so because lyrically it was hard like what am i what do i want to talk about what is you know what is the thing i want to talk about trying to and 
and like sometimes it was like, yeah, I have this idea I want to talk about, but how, how am I going to go about it? And how do I go about structuring it? Um, and, and then it was just disorganized kind of thoughts and, and then not really getting it, you know, trying to, trying to just, you know, put it into these, you know, uh, the context of a verse or a course. So now I have the, this great skill set of writing from the title or uh, doing, doing daily writes, uh, which is uh, Andrea Stolpe really helped me with this is where it's like, you know, you, you write, you do a daily write like sensory writing on anything and it primes the pump for just getting yourself ready to for expression you mean and you mean a lyric writing like you sit down yeah. and you free flow you're free flowing you're just free like flowing I, it doesn't yeah idea like you know you, you take in it could be uh what pat patterson calls like object writing um and you're just you know you could take like an object like you know just a chair you know and then mm -hmm. you start spinning out what does what is that chair it, could, it you start going it, oh it's got this you know plush leather or you know the deep brown you start describing what it's about you start describing the feel of it and that touch that's the smooth like kind of surface like s the slickness of it and you start getting into it and what it feels like to sit in it and you just slump in the chair and you you kind of just and it maybe and then you connect it it's just free flowing with your mind of just like that that old chair that it was maybe it was your dad's chair and it used to, it came from the house mm. you know and now he's passed away but you remember that old chair where he sat there and he, he taught you, you know, uh, you know, he taught you how to whittle something or, you know, and it was just, you start just experimenting with let your mind go. And all of a sudden those little elements can either just prime the pump or they can actually be targeted to, uh, to mm. an actual title, you know, and then you can write from that title, but explore that title through your senses. And so really you trying to get, you know, will you yeah. reverse engineer a lot of times? Um, so let's say uh, you're doing one of these like like uh, journal. What do you, what do you specifically call yeah. that? Yeah, what do journal, you call it? Uh, well, they they call it uh, they call it either uh, destination writing is what Andrea Stolpe calls it, or object writing is what Pat Patterson calls it, where you start with an object. She likes to start in destinations and think of yourself like in the subway and 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 put yourself mm. in that environment so and it's just journaling it's journaling and it's free writing you know so okay. any, any free associative kind of stuff doesn't have to be complete sentences just you know fragments you know mm. it, the, the point would probably be to take away that judgment part of your brain that's like this isn't good enough this doesn't work <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to, like like uh, just get yeah. just kind of break free totally totally that's the whole point of it is to like even if you're not going to use those elements or the stuff that you come up with that you feel free and that that little you know that little sensor that comes in and tells oh you know say, oh that's cliche oh, don't say that and i have a big problem with that and i've always had a pro you know i always wanted the editor comes in right immediately off the bat and starts going no don't say that this gets you out of that and you just start going and as long as you keep sticking to your senses and you keep sticking to that moment and that object and uh, just let that flow happen you know there's no you can't be no judgment involved this is just yeah. the time to yeah. just dump dump you just dump it all out and and just go with it uh and some people are you know naturally better at just letting go and and doing that i'm not naturally that way so this has definitely been the the learning curve for that. It took me took me quite a while to turn off the sensor and just 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 start writing, you know. Yeah. But that's one of those beautiful things that, you know, as far as like we were talking about earlier, the personal growth trajectory of, of anyone that I don't you know, mm -hmm. I think that that's just it, everyone's got their own uh, strengths and weaknesses and so that you know you have to like work on yours for it you know it sounds like lyrics are your grind mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for other people myself included lyrics are like a piece of cake i can just be like you know but i'm not i don't have quite the the musical reservoir where i feel like i labor on wow. music a lot of times and uh that's you know so anyways i i totally relate I, to that but that's yeah, that, that, yeah. So everybody has their kind of 
process that works, you know, best for them. And it's, and it, and, and, and for me now it's, now it's changing. So that's, that's kind of neat to, in terms of what you work on and, and the, the way that you approach it. So, I mean, and, and you can take it from any avenue, as I said, like, you know, just taking a drum beat and trying that and seeing if like, oh, let me just put some chords over this. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, I, I'm wondering, has made, has being an accompanist, it, it seems like that was part of the beginning of your own songwriting journey in a way, like hanging around with other songwriters. And then what is the the cross pollinating effect between you seeing other songwriters, you being like, well, I want to write songs. And then has that in turn also made you a better accompanist? Have those affected uh, one another? Definitely. Definitely. Um, I think that the, the writing part was always the, the, I mean, way back in like, you know, being in orchestra or being in marching band and all that stuff. I was more fascinated with the construction of, you know, the, the material and oh, how did they come up with that? And how do, how do the pieces work? So I was always interested, interested in that. And then just playing, you know, t playing in top 40 bands and just like, oh, I got to take the part, tune apart to learn it anyway. And, and just be like, okay, oh, here's, here's how the pieces are working. And then all of a sudden you'd have friends who are writing songs or you get into a band where it's all original material and they're writing the song and you've got to come up with a guitar part for it you have to think of what does this song need? And as an accompanist, I go, okay, okay, this part's gonna work. It's gonna stay out of the way of the vocal or that's too busy. Where does my piece fit to, you know, my piece of the puzzle fit to express what that songwriter, um, you know, you know, is, is it, what they're trying to get out of this, this piece that they've created and that, that, uh, that the emotional core to what that piece is and do my part speak to that. So that had definitely made me think about being a better accompanist in terms of how that song is constructed, what the person is trying to express with that, that material. And so then when I go to, go to write, like I'm thinking about what is the emotional core of this song already? Mm. And, and when I come up with the parts, it's, it's much easier for me to come up with the parts, you know, as, as an accompanist, just cause that's like usually what I have is, you know, that's my main thing that I'm doing as a main gig. So uh, now it's just like, yeah. do you feel like, sorry, do you feel like you almost have to, um, you can almost separate yourself at this point? Like, like you can be a, be, become kind of objective about your own playing in, in a, in a positive way of, okay, Lucian is the songwriter now. And what does this song need for Lucian? D does that, does that make sense? Does it feel like that ever? I, uh, I, I know that there's, there's times of like, uh, there's, there's times of like, Lucian the guitar player wants to take over as just the instrumental guitar player <laughs> who's gonna try and get in the way of the, I, and, and that's, that's always, oh, I wanna play this guitar thing, but it's, it's like, oh, that's, nah, that's, that's a little bit too busy. It's getting in the way of the lyric or it's getting a, um, and there, you know, or insecurities come in that like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to cover things up that I feel are weaknesses in the songwriting. So if I just put the, you know, I, I put the little flavor of an instrument in there to d distract from something that, that, that there are elements of, you know, where I feel my weaknesses are and insecurities are that the, the Lucian, the, the accompanist could feel like, he wants to step into like, you know, kind of patch up an area that might be a weakness in songwriting. And then Lucian, the songwriter has to go, maybe I need to rewrite that part. And there's this thing of that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you go back and forth with like this, this tug of war between the roles that you're playing with your own, you know, your own self. But you always know actually the, the answer because a lot of times in critique, it'll be, it'll be, you know, somebody goes, oh, yeah that chord i don't maybe that chord's not the best for that melodic area or the melody needs to do something different there and all the while you're going you know that that's where the weakness is the whole time you just need to hear uh, it from somebody else to see if they point it out but you know 
that's exactly what they're going to say. And you've already, you were just, you know, if you hoping you could get away with it, right? <laughs> yeah. So do you, when you use that court example, do you mean um, throwing in perhaps unnecessary extensions just to show that you can? Is, is that what you're talking um, about? Um, more like if, if there's uh, like, like if, if you're thinking about like melodically, like all of a sudden there's, you know, the chord and it's okay the root of the chord and maybe the melody note sh should have been da. and it should have been that ninth to give it like uh that that it that it should have been a little bit more unstable for that word choice and so that there may have been a different color chord wise or in a completely different chord ba, that maybe it was that or oh the, the sentiment speaks more for how that lyric should have been or that w particular word that maybe the harmony was, uh, you, uh, you know, a different choice or blah. And all of a sudden, oh, that yeah. expresses something different or blah, blah, blah. All those have different uh, emotional states in terms of right. the color. And maybe it was the the color was wrong because of the harmony and it needed a different choice maybe it was a different note you know melodically and and so uh it, playing with those elements and going oh i just didn't spend the time to like really explore what it was because i was already you know i just kind of moved on and just knowing oh it didn't feel right but i didn't have the answer at the time and this is why hmm. critique and critique groups are great because you can get the feedback because gosh, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> so like, I know something isn't working. Maybe somebody else that I can talk to all of a sudden may hear it and they go, Oh, totally. Uh, yeah. I think you, they point exactly what you're already pointing at that either you're hoping well, nobody else will hear what they always do. And that maybe they offer a little bump to go, Oh, they offer a different perspective, you know, mm. that, that opens your mind to, you know, have a, uh, to, for the solution to happen, you know, not that they need to give you the exact solution. They just give you a bump in the right direction to solve the problem. Cause that a lot of songwriting is your problem solving. It's problem solving. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's really all it is. If you mm -hmm. think about it, it is reverse engineering a uh, either like emotional or lyrical idea it's it's mm -hmm. all reverse engineering you know in two to five minutes or whatever yeah how to effectively paint that emotion mm -hmm. it, but it's like it's all about i mean there's just infinite permutations of how that's done i mean that's the game right yeah yeah and and when it comes down to i mean uh, when it comes down to like you know the really great songs that that you know at least in terms of whatever you think is is a great song kind of i mean it, you know subjectively it can it, whatever moves you you know <laughs> like that you know is and i listen to the way that some of these songs are you know constructed and for even if it's not my style or the stuff that i would choose to put on and listen to when i listen to it i go yep they did it it's it's fantastically written because it's like nuts and bolts are tightened down to where it's just like you, you can't poke holes in the thing because it's it's done so well that you don't get that uh hmm uh where, oh, where, yeah. where you where you either fall out of the tune um because something isn't jiving there's either something like yeah that that chord isn't sitting right or that lyric just uh oh, they they used an end rhyme and it was too right on the nose because it was a perfect rhyme or something like that. And it just, it falls and makes you take note of what the construction and the tools are. And then all of a sudden you're out of the tune because, because you're thinking about, wait, something there. You mean as a listener, you're out of the as tune. As a listener. Yeah. You're out yeah. of the tune. It takes you out of the tune. But when I listen to some of those, and of course, like, you know, all the, all the Max Martin tunes and stuff like that, they're like, mm. you know, him as a producer and like they really tighten those things down and it's like you know they're they solve the problems and they have a certain way of doing it or a certain way of working 
but when those those songs like all those nashville songwriters and stuff when you hear those songs it's it's just like yep that's that's like they got everything tightened down there's no word that's gonna you know just be like ah oh, we let it go you know they found that right mm. word that's gonna sit well and the, the rhyme works in a way that sits you know uh, it, it sits in the piece to not uh take you out of it and make you think about like huh that was odd <laughs> you know so yeah i i feel like i know what you're talking about i've showed some of the music i've written lately to a couple people and it's been really, really interesting to uh, have them have them comment that like this song just seems uh, th when they speak in non musical terms, it just seems to flow, or they can't really. Because I'm trying to ask like, well, how or why did that work? And and if you ask like a non musician, they can't really tell you. They can just say that it. it there was no moment where it didn't where the story wasn't a, a clear, gentle. Uh, arc. There were no bumps that mm. that shook you out of the you know of the tale, and I, and that's what anyone wants in that song. You want to be carefully guided through the lyrics and the chords, you know, to have that nice little four minute uh, emotional journey, and yeah. and have that little dopamine rush, you know. Yeah. But like yeah. that, uh, well, it's fascinating. Um, yeah, and and it's done in different ways, you know, in terms of how they get there. Sometimes it can be more per, you know uh, production driven, like kind of thing um some sometimes it's not the lyric that's in the, the the main feature of it and sometimes you know sometimes it's just the groove that's there sometimes it's the ear candy of production that kind of gives us you know kind of sets the stage for what we're supposed to experience and yeah and and, and people don't need to be like you know totally schooled to know uh and and, and be able to go yeah, that minor seven flat five on there, you know, just, you know, what, you know, it's, WTF or something or, or, or nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It, 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 and they, they're not listening like that and they don't need to. And there are like, and I've, I've talked to like songwriting friends where they've been in songwriting sessions where it's like, you know, in professional situations. And there are people like, they, they're not, you know, they, they don't know all this music theory, but they're really great with knowing what the core intent is and when it's hitting that emotional mark um, or not. And they'll express it in ways in like, you know, mm. in, in expressing it in ways that are, is more emotional or, but they feel like, it. oh, that pops or that hits. hits. Yeah, is, yeah. That, is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that, you know, great. That's, that's really, that's really jiving right there. That's yeah, great. yeah. Or, 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 it's, or it's not, yes, you know, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel right. And they go by feel, and that's great too. Because, um, isn't that? I, I mean, that's how I experience it when I'm going. Oh, something isn't right. It doesn't feel right. Because that's what it's about: is trying to get that that the feeling to happen. You know, mm -hmm. to get to get that feeling. In in, in for us, obviously, as a songwriter, you got to feel it first, and and then and, and if it's working or if it's not working. And then you, then of course, then you can ex express it as like the the studied or you know kind of this, the studied musician as to hmm okay it's not working emotionally it's not working what do I get to to get it to emotionally work and what are the tools that I have okay I, if I know different chords or you know uh, you know melodically I could change it around or if it's sort of a rhythmic thing that's the, it, the the phrasing's not right. Maybe uh, the, maybe the lyrics set on the wrong beat. Um, mm. Maybe it's the word itself. Maybe it's the it's the it's it's the the lyric phrase. Some that that sentence isn't really working right in the context. And you know, it could be any number of things in terms of the way you go and solve it. Uh, and then editing is always where it's at. <laughs> Once you have an idea and you kind of get something in in form, it's all about editing, editing, editing you know, and chopping it apart and, and being able to like not, not be satisfied with it until you think it's right, until you feel it's right. And it's all that's, a feel thing at that point. That's one of the questions I want to ask you though, is the internal critic comes in at that point because how do you decide when it's good enough? Because that can also really uh, stop you or hold you up 
uh, particularly, um, you know, when it comes to shipping, you're of like, okay, it's done. This is now done and I'm not going to keep picking at it. How, I mean, maybe there's never a complete 100% answer to that, but as far as you've come, where, what's your take on that, on how good is good enough and when is it done? And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I never feel like it's really done. Cause like, uh, the done part is always like, there is a version of it. Um, right. and I've gone back and, and like, you know, swapped out, swapped out a word here or like, on, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, now that I go back on it, I thought it was done and it, it felt right, but there's a more right, you know, that mm. uh, more right of a feel to it. Um, that, and, and it's, hmm, I guess in terms of the, the process, there's just like, at least not giving up on it. <laughs> I'm just finishing it up and it's a version of it and I'm sick and tired of it. it yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, right. Because there's always that happens of just like, I'm done working on it. It is right. what it is for now. And, and, and it's okay. That's good enough. I think fatigue, I think fatigue and boredom might be the best solution to perfectionism. It's like, all right, I'm over it. I want to do a new song. Like, yeah. Yeah. I found that a lot. Like, that gives me, that is the best for a sense of urgency of like, okay, well, I already know that I've got a whole, uh, I've got a whole junk drawer of ideas. So I already know that I need to, I need to do my best when I have a fresh idea to ship it, to ship a version of it. Yeah. So it's done. But then I also know that the half-life of that is very short of like, I'm already, yeah. as soon as I'm, you know, close to done, there's that little part of you that's like, you're, you're 80% done. And then you're like, oh God, and you want to do something yeah. else, and you never finish it. And that's how you get the drunk drawer. But at the same time, yes. you know, you've got to, I don't know. I, th I think that yeah. might be the secret sauce is actually boredom. Yeah. And, and there is that thing. Uh, one of my friends, he's, he talks about that. Like most songs are in that, you know, 80 to 90% thing where they get in that trough, you know, and you get them to that 80, 90% kind of range. And he says, those aren't the songs that make the, uh, make their records. And if you're going to try and pitch a song to somebody or something like that, it's, it, you have to get it out of the trough. And that's when the real editing work and that. It's when it's a grind. It, that's it, the, it, that's it, when it's not fun. Yeah. Is that 10%. Yeah is that 10% to get it over, over that hump and get it into that like top margin of the top 10% of songs, you know, and then there's even that top 1% of songs that are like the ones we go, wow, you know, like that is the real, that is the real thing. But there, there is that, yeah, that, that there's nothing like a deadline, of course, because I was just writing a song and I had like, I think I had just a week and a half to get it from what the two, you know, the idea to, recording and have it completely finished and so it ended up being like i have to work efficiently okay so my process has to be like efficient um and i have to say what i'm gonna say and and also make it feel like it's the right thing that i want to say and not ship out the door something that i i feel is just like ah. Oh. I don't want to put out anything mediocre and it's for something and you're being you know you're being hired to do something that you, you your craft that you're working on all the time you can rely on it to get you there and uh that deadlines yeah that boredom it'll help you finish like just i want to get something done and not all songs are supposed to be like you know like top 40 radio or the you know because different songs can uh express different things in different ways so do you sort your right. songs into different bins of like you write a song and then you're like, I don't actually know if this is a Lucian song. Does that ever happen to you? You're like, I don't even know if this is a, a song yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like lately I've been, you know, just like coming up with little uh, synth chord kind of pad things and w with the drum groove. And it's like, man, this is definitely not for me. It's not my thing, but it is like something that I can do and work on and construct from this standpoint. So it's like, I'm not going to release a, it's not me as, as like the singer songwriter type of, you know, Americana kind of thing that I do, but it is still me because I'm creating it, but it, it wouldn't be like my specific, it wouldn't be something that I would be as an artist is like the thing that I'm going to 
promote and release, you know, uh, so which is fine because like that's that's great because like I can you know think about an artist that it might be for, and think about like well what if this was a song for you know uh, you know for Carrie Underwood or something like that you know like it's going to be different than what Lucian would do as his his own material, but that's great that's a great exercise and a way of writing to explore new territory and acquire new skills and tools and all that kind of stuff. So, mm. Yeah. Well, okay. This is a question I wanted to ask you and it might be, well, I, I'll just throw it out there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I know when it comes to me and it comes to writing songs, <laughs> if they're my songs, I don't love my own singing voice. Mm -hmm. But I also know that I've like been in bands where there's another singer and then he doesn't sing the songs the way that I want to hear them. But then sometimes I can't even sing the songs the way I want to hear them. Okay. So then, so then sometimes you have to make certain compromises because you know what you're capable of as a vocalist. But then mm -hmm. other times I feel like, I feel like I'll just write a song that I can't sing and then I'll sing it 200 times and then it's okay. And then I, and I hope that maybe that'll get me better. Cause that's been another part of the problem is I hate singing practice. And so then I'll like, so I'll write a song that I can't sing, but, and I'll try and keep the awareness of vocal technique that I, that, you know, that I have learned. Um, so I don't have to like go do scales every day, but maybe I'm, maybe that's just another thing for me personally that I need to get. I just need to get that discipline as a vocalist so that just like every other area of musicianship that it's, it's there when you want it. It's there when you need yeah. it. You, you know, you can hit the, the high C at will when yeah. you want it because that's what the song calls for or whatever. So I, I guess that's what I'm getting at with, uh, with you, your relationship to your own singing voice. Mm, yes. What is well, that? Well, uh, I was, I've always been reluctant to sing because I'm not, I'm not a vocalist. There are, you know, those great, vo who have great voices and are specialists as like vocalists. Um, so that's, that's why collaboration is really good because you, you know, if there's something that you can't sing, yeah, and you find a singer, then you can kind of coach them as to like, you know, phrasing and things that you want. Um, like, or they'll have a better interpretation than you could, you know, think of like, if you want the vocals that are out of my range, of course, like, you know, either I just write for what I can do, or I try and push it. And of course, like, uh, taken like a lot of vocal lessons and take several years of vocal lessons to just, you know, feel more comfortable with a voice and feel like I know what I'm doing with my voice doesn't mean I'm any, like, using more techniques and doing a whole bunch of melismatic stuff and, and, and you know, uh, singing all these, you know, you know, runs and things like that. Um, uh, my voice is more functional for the song. So it's like, that's, that's where part of uh, the part of, you know, that wanting to cover up something like cover up the vocals because it's like, oh yeah, my, you know, my vocals aren't, it's, it's not, I'm not a power vocalist or anything like that. Um, I'm more of that singer songwriter, just kind of telling a storytelling kind of songwriter. Uh, and my voice is a little bit smoother and it's just kind of gentler. Okay. Uh, I worked on getting more grit. So like, so I, you know, started working on those kind of elements. So either I learn the techniques or maybe at some point I'll just find, find the vocalist who can just really do it right out of the gate. But do you work on your singing voice? Like, like with any regularity? Yes. What's that like for you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In terms, well, that's, that's like uh, a lot of through uh, just just practicing the songs and, and trying different ways that I could sing it or different ways I could phrase it, taking cover tunes and just uh, experimenting with the way I phrase those things, the way that the melody works, the way it sits for my voice and finding what is the right key in terms of the range that I want to use that it, it sits right for, you know, for the lyric and for the way that the um, it's, it's so that it you know, goes back to that that feel so it feels right and it's sitting in the right register so it's poking out enough it has enough brightness to it maybe oh i want this a little bit darker so the register should be here 
And then sometimes I go back and go, hmm, maybe the melody needs to be rewritten to be in a different register because this key feels right. Um, and it, hmm. you know, but it, it is working on the vocals or just experimenting with the way that I'm singing it, try and phrase it differently. And I'll, you know, go through process of, you know, trying to change the melody, trying to do something vocally different. Um, and of course I have, you know, vocal warmups and all that kind of stuff to get the voice primed to feel like it's ready. Uh, uh, but like when actually singing, that's like trying a different phrasing, trying, oh, maybe I'm going to swap that note out, you know, like try it a little bit different melody kind of elements. Then it's like, oh, you know, I start to get a little stretching a little bit. Did there used to be a time when your, um, your relationship with your voice uh, kept you from writing songs and, you know, oh, feeling yeah. like you could express? <laughs> I mean, what, what's that been like? Yeah, they, they, they were all uh, the whole voice, like the discomfort, the, you know, like feeling uncomfortable with the voice and going, ooh, I just don't like the sound. And, you know, part of it was just like n not knowing the proper techniques at first. Then it, then it was like I had to get more comfortable with own, my own voice because of being in a context of like three part, part harmony group, where it was like, no, you got you to sing and you, you got to fill in this harmony part. And now we want you to sing some, you know, some lead on a couple of songs. Mm. It was more being like. All right, so you're you know, almost like, more forced into it? Uh, more forced into it. I mean, I had been writing songs and everything, but it was mainly for myself of just writing and going, okay, my voice is functional and it's just there. But then when it, I had to actually do it and it's like, we're putting this on stage. So you have, you've got to get your harmony parts down. Then you're going to do some of your own songs. And then it was like putting it on a stage. Then that really became like, all right, I, I've got to own up to this. And I, you know, really started woodshedding a little bit more with the voice. And then, and then just over time, it's that, you know, put in the time, put in the effort. And all of a sudden you start to see results and like, it's like all of a sudden my voice felt more present and I was lending myself to the experience of it um, and not judging in the moment. And that I was more playing like, well, this is, this is the version of Lucian who's the performer and I'm not going to think about trying to edit that, that, that version of myself that needs to go out and deliver this tune and get it across to an audience, you know? And mm. if you're on stage, you can't second guess what you're doing and you just, you do it and you, you, you have to sell it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I watched um, that not all of, but most of, or I don't know, some, some, whatever. I watched that uh, live stream thing that you did at that uh, concert hall in Bellevue. Oh, yeah, or whatever yeah, K, for, K, uh, for KPC and Kurt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I thought it was amazing. I, I was like, dude, you're, particularly to the empty theater, it felt like that could have been a very intimidating thing. Even though there was no one there, that I was still like, like the visuals of it, and you're just there by yourself and accompanying mm -hmm. yourself. It's like, God, this, this is not something I think you could just jump into. Un I mean, unless you're really wired that way. Uh, to me, it just yeah. seemed like that 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 might have required some, you know, that requires some repetitions. That requires a, a bit of uh, self assuredness to even commit to something like that. Yeah, definitely. Like a um, you know, being asked to do that kind of performance, you know, uh, yeah, with, with like where you you kind of depend on you know what what to do next or trying to relate to the audience you, you, you know it's 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 an experience for the audience and experience for the performer to know in that that reaction that you get and when that reaction's not there and you're just doing it a lot of it was just like okay here's how i'm feeling in the moment hopefully this is going and then choosing things that i, mm. I definitely built up to that where you know in practice sessions and I had plenty of material that I could swap in and out at any one moment if something felt right or something didn't feel right. So that I could, well, I'll do this now, you know, hmm. so that I could, I could be in the moment of what that was to kind of cultivate at least a, a show kind of thing. So it, I had practiced a lot for it uh, and 
honing it down in terms of, you know, I'm not really good with banter or anything. So I, you know, I worked on that. Uh, mm. um, and, and just getting the pieces to feel like they, anything could happen. And then, you know, and for, for me also being a guitarist, like, oh, I want to play too. So, you know, doing, doing some jazz pieces, doing some classical guitar stuff that it felt like I could, I, I felt free enough that I could do a mixed bag of stuff. I yeah, it was badass. My songs, I can, you know, yeah. so just try and, you know, like I felt, I, I felt free enough. I mean, and, and as me not being like the, the total extroverted kind of performer guy, like, you know, I, I'm much more comfortable being the accompanist and sitting in the background and go, you're singer, you were out in front, they're focused on you anyway. Hey, this is cool. I get to be in the, I get to be in the background. When you're carrying it all yourself, it's kind of like, all right, it's, it's all on me. What can I do? And then just exploring those different aspects of things that I know I, I can do, which is just play, just play instrumental guitar, just, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, or exploring my tunes in a different way by, you know, uh, doing some of the live looping thing and like, yeah, I want to take a solo on this or no, I'm not going to take a solo on this. So I'll just negate that part of it and we'll just play through the song. That, that takes the practice point for me of just, you know, the comfort level of what I want to do uh, that I can, you know, call an audible and, and do that. But yeah. yeah, well, that was cool. I mean, it felt like a very, uh, it, it was a pretty full expression of the different sides of your musicianship. So it was really fun to watch because I, I feel like I've said this to you a number of times. I, th I think people, it's pretty normal in, in, I think human psychology in general that you tend to view someone in the lens in which you've initially made the impression as in you're my guitar teacher so it's hard for me to think of you as a as a fully rounded songwriter or i think of lucian as the accompanist you know virtuosic shredder dude and you don't think about him as as writing you know songs about appreciating his childhood and yeah. and just singing them with a few chords like you know so i thought that was cool that you know you were you were just going for that um yeah well, great. I mean, and that's, that's the thing that like, I mean, think we, we all do have these, you know, many, we're, you know, multifaceted human beings that are these, these creatures that have all these different experiences and aren't just, you know, uh, just singular entities as to like, you know, yes, people see one side of us, you know, and because that's what they know us from a context or something, but you know, there's, there's plenty of other aspects of people that, you know, maybe we don't see. And when we do get to experience it, it's kind of like, Oh, I didn't know that, you know, but we, because that's, that's human nature, right. Of trying to go, well, I'm trying to understand. So I, I got to have some parameters for things to try and understand and focus it through this lens of what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, but being open enough, hopefully we can see people in different lights when they present something to us that that's not all they are, you know? <laughs> right. Well, but I also think you in the context of even that, that show, that live stream show that you did, um, that you, it, you helped people to do that by your, your selection and your willingness to, to sort of genre jump and to jump from an instrumental piece to, you know, sing, uh, you know, yeah. I thought that was cool because I, I would imagine if I were in your shoes that there's a part of you that might doubt that. Like, well, you know, your internal critic's like, well, should I really yeah. just play this? Or is, is that going to be too much? Is this going to be too much? And it, it seems like you were, you just kind of just thought, whatever, I'm just going to do it. I think it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was just trying to have fun. That was the thing is, and, and definitely there is a part of me that kind of goes, oh, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that. Like, you know, maybe that's a bit too much guitar or, or that kind of thing, you know, never, and, and never, never. There's, there's never too much guitar. And, and, and those, those aspects of like, uh, you know, just, I'm trying to have fun too, you know, for, for that experience. But, you know, for, for me, like the way I see it as like, what I'm trying to get to also is not, there's the guitar side of me. There's the classical guitar side of me. There's the, improvisational kind of jazz thing that I do. And then there's the kind of more folk Americana kind of songwriting that I do. And the mm. thing that I'm trying to work towards is like, how do I blend that all together into one thing versus being these kind of three areas 
And well, it seems like you're on that path. It seems, I mean, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Watching that, I I felt that. I felt Mm. that they're they're starting. Like you can tell, they're still a little separate. You can tell, you know, Mm -hmm. but but you can tell that there's within you. It does seem like uh like that was a that was a good snapshot of lucian and i think that that'll keep i think we'll keep seeing more of that i mean yeah yeah and, and then hopefully i'm just going to get towards that thing of blending more together of that that uh, of blending everything together where the the guitar is a little bit freer when i'm doing the vocal thing and the vocals become freer when i'm doing the guitar thing and like yeah there's this melding of of style and um in the melding of styles and where any it's more fluid in terms of style versus being compartmentalized, but I'm, I'm trying, you know, it's all, it's, it, everything's a work in progress. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm excited about it. I, I feel like we should sign off here and, sure. uh, and yeah. plan on, you know, if, it, if you're down doing a, maybe another installment, cause we actually didn't get around to talking nuts and bolts of, um, of a couple things I wanted to address, you know, some sure. of your specific songs, I wanted to analyze um, you know, yeah. some of these trust fall songs. And then I also had a couple other questions I was curious about. Um, but I feel like in the interest of time and particularly, cause this is one of my first rodeos with the zoom thing. I, I would hate if we recorded some like two hour amazing conversation and then some technical thing happens that I didn't know. And it yeah. was like, Oh, that was wasted. So I hope that this is going to turn out and, cool. but I want to bookend it just in case. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. We can do, yeah, we can do another one at some point, but I know, thank you for having me on and just for asking me questions and taking an interest in what I do. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And we're, you know, cause I'm learning from you too. So, you know, uh, we're, we're kind of exploring this thing of songwriting and music and just how does everybody do their way of, you know, what is their process and their way of doing it? So yeah, it would be great to talk nuts and bolts. You know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I can't wait. Um, and so, uh, let's see where, where can people find you? Uh, what's the best way to find Trust Fall, the you know the record and collection of songs, and the best way to uh, find all things Lucian? All things Lucian. Uh, well, uh, I, I think definitely my YouTube channel would be the way to just kind of see what's what's going on with like latest stuff, but also um, in terms of trust fall there's on it's on band camp or just lucian lamont trust fall on band camp or just through itunes uh it's it's uh, it's on there with you know everybody else's stuff um yeah and if just that's that's the main place where you can find me but there's also noteworthies.com noteworthies.com how do you spell uh, that n-o-t-e-w-o-r-d-i-e-s.com and that's kind of where the website is for uh, kind of all musical stuff about. So that's kind of your teaching. hub website. Yeah, kind of hub like of teaching and you know kind of kind of stuff. You know, uh, it, that's that's kind of the main one. You know, and of course there's uh, my uh, Facebook page, which is just Lucian Lamont. So I'm on, on uh, have a Facebook page. So there's stuff on there too. Cool. Yeah. And for anyone who's interested in lessons, uh, Lucian is a bottomless reservoir, in my opinion, of musical knowledge. So, um, all right. Well, let me see. I'm going to let you go here, Lucian. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, Nate. I appreciate you too. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>